Welcome back to the Steve Universe Post Show. I'm Austin Vox. I'm Nemo. And my name is Tom. Yes. We just watched Steve Universe Future episode 11 and 12 in Dreams and Business Casual. Welcome back, everybody, to the end of Steve Universe Future and the end of the Steven Universe franchise. What an optimistic start. <laughs> 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 These episodes were storyboarded by uh, In Dreams was by Maya and Etienne. And then Business Casual was by Lamar and Mickey. And yeah, same uh, director, executive producers, and such as usual. In Dreams, okay. Steven kind of has a new power, but like, I don't, again, it works. It's kind of just a variation on another power he had. Well, I mean, I feel like it's a variation like, a few powers he's had. Yeah. I feel like they can just do any weird concepts and just be like, it's his powers, but like, it works kind of. Broadcasting his dreams on TV, he already has, like, the ability to astral project. True. He has and he already powers. has electrical interference and a maximum capacity where, like, he gets kind of just frustrated with Greg and Amethyst and Amethyst changing into Rose and like it causes the TV to turn to static and then mm-hmm. Rose is a similar thing and we need to talk when Greg's like can you talk to me like a real human being and then like the music stops playing like it's implied out because of her yeah okay so like again electrical interference and astral production it makes sense that he would be able to broadcast his dreams yeah yeah that makes sense this episode was weird because it shined a bit of light on Steven's you know current problems like it kind of like caught people back up to speed which I th- feel like was intentional because they probably figured there might be a break if it's had like the halfway point, but also kind of has some ominous foreshadowing in the dreams, but it was also just like a weird meta commentary on like reboots, both cartoons. Um, towards the end, I was definitely like, all right, this is just taking jabs at Riverdale, but it, it was really funny. I'm just like, wow, they really went off. No, like, yeah. it, I don't know, it, it got like really in depth at the end. It was kind <laughs> like, of like, Paradox made storyboards. <laughs> Paradox did make storyboards. I think, um... Imagine storyboarding a cartoon character with storyboards. Imagine having your cartoon characters walk into them being animated in Korea during the episode <laughs> where they visit Korea. Steven's Dream. Steven's... I'm referring, of course, to Steven's Dream. Right? Yeah, Steven's yeah, Dream. Of course I am. Yeah, of course. But the point is... Is that a reference? What's that? Yo, maybe Steven's Yo. dreams are just, like, a gateway into the real world. Steven's <laughs> dreams, every time they break the fourth wall or they want to talk about the animation process, which they do a weird amount in the show, <laughs> they always do it through Steven's dreams. Yeah, the finale, Steven will be like, yeah, I'm going to leave Beach City. And then he goes to sleep and then he starts, like, fading away. You're like, Steven, where are you going? And, and then, then it'll cut to Zach Halton in real time. He'll be like, whoa. <laughs> I like that every episode, even if it's about something silly or goofy like him and Peridot fixing a show, like in this episode, they always tie it into, like, the overarching like problem Beams. and crisis that's going on within Steven mm-hmm. so that there's I would argue like no filler episodes in the future at all because no matter what's happening it goes into I mean it's also like that. an epilogue if anyone at this point is like ah oh, filler it's like dude just stop watching yeah that's kind of what makes <laughs> like, the sad. show is over yeah I don't know what to tell you I don't want to think about it like that I want to think about it like we get a little more time with people we love I mean really it is happen. like that like this season does not need to exist get over it like just let it go it's anyways like, it's like when you're leaving grandma's house and dad still has to warm up the car, so you got like 10 more minutes. That's what Steven Universe Future is. That must be a very stressful 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. You just have to deal with all of your emotional trauma in that 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> They're really pairing Steven up with every character, I think, which is really good. Mm-hmm. I like that we're doing that. Well, I mean, something that was pointed out on Twitter by an artist, Don't Touch Perry. Um, <laughs> Great name, I have to say. Uh, Steven is having a blast with the Crystal Gem B team, and we even see that in Business Casual. Like, he finds and self connecting more with Lapis, Paradon, and Bismuth, but Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl, he's just kind of like irritable around them. He's not as like cheery and optimistic as he used to be. Like, and he's just not as like happy and comfortable around his family. And dreams opened up with everyone at a party. The dancing was beautiful. Shame called it lame. It looked like a lame party. It was like eight people. Yeah, but yeah. did you see the dancing they were doing? Uh, yeah, it was a good dancing. You know, that rhyme took like two days to storyboard. And I respect them for doing that. Animation's hard, it's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. They're putting us like on the blacklist. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> he thinks our parties are lame. Like, he's not gonna come out to Burbank. <laughs> <laughs> you made a point of like both of that and also in business casual with like the ice rink. Yeah, I mean, it, one okay. A lot of cartoons have had this thing where like it's easier for things to be emptier than full of people, right? Yeah. So like if you look in the background of Powerpuff Girls, like I don't know, like the city of Townsville is like scarily empty most I mean, of the time. I mean, Beach City <laughs> is kind of a small town. Though. And but Beach City plays into it because it's supposed to be a small town. So I feel like it. I works. feel like we've all grown up. 
up in like city metropolitan areas, a very populated area. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like we might not understand like going to a skating rink and it's like, oh, here's eight people that I know just because like we all live in the same small town. It would have been funny if Sour Cream was like, wow, it's packed tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they really always usually play into it. But like when there was like that concert happening on the beach, I mean, there was like a small crowd of 16. Like, <laughs> yeah. It always feels like kind of sad, but like, it, no, not, I, I won't say sad. I'll say <laughs> endearingly cute how small it's Endearingly cute. Yeah, there we go. We'll be positive with it. Yeah, Steven's dying. Yeah, that's like, the, the cookie cat was like, why are you still here? I was like, Jesus, like, calm down, dude. Pineapple. Like, hold the punches. Yellow diamond. It's all pineapple. Yeah, he's all I hit the mic eight times. Pineapple, <laughs> yellow diamond. Pineapple, yellow diamond. That's that doesn't all. sound real. What's Seal, blue hard? diamond. No, I, I can see that. I like how white diamond's just too tall to be anything, so it just had her heels. Yeah. Well, also, it kind of looked like a mountain. But I don't know. Steven's dreams, they're metal as heck. He's eating the chili. They're really, they're crazy dreams. They're spicy. Yeah, it's really the chili. I, I think his like ability to dream at will and to fall asleep at will is kind of impressive enough. Oh yeah. Dang. Bro. But he, he's been doing that for a while. Yeah, I know. Uh, back he, in Reunited. They always need him to sleep. That's his thing. I cannot, I cannot sleep like that. I know. I think um, it's cute seeing Peridot like being her own self, being her own person. <laughs> I think just having Peridot and Steven and having it just be those two in a room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really funny. It's great. Like, they're good Duo. Peridot just had a lot of zingers in this episode. Like, with this bike, you're not supposed to eat before bed. But Steven's yeah, like, yeah. I hear it makes the dreams more vivid. Never mind, I'm not gonna say this. This will be off the books, because this is dumb. But I never thought there'd be an episode where Steven anymore. No! <laughs> and, then, and then Connie's stepping on him in his dream. Literally! Yeah, oh my god. Okay, I think that was just like just foreshadowing like next week's episode, because it, one, it's gone together forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, some people on the internet, a good people on the internet already know what happens, but like, well, so Steven was gonna like kiss like a fictional character, and I was like, is this allowed? Like, <laughs> yeah. And then he sees Connie, and then Connie turns to Obsidian, which I'm, again, I'm, I'm assuming is foreshadowing potential heartbreak with Steven and Connie at the temple. Oh, shit. Shoot. Well, the next episode the description it seems like it could be like a heavy Stephen Connie episode, mm -hmm. following the heels of like the most wholesome Stephen Connie episode. That would be heartbreaking. I mean, yeah, that's how they set it up. But like, this is future, so yeah, okay. Man, they're probably like in the writers' room, just like cackling at themselves. Yeah. And then Stephen and Connie will roller rink as Devani, and they're like, ha, 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 ha. no, I'm kidding. it probably was not like that at all. <laughs> they're probably like crying, writing the outline, like, yeah. we have to do this. That's what a lot of shows do. I've noticed is like if they know that they're about to break everyone's heart they just like put in a bunch of fan service and they're like y'all can't be mad at us <laughs> even though we're about to kill you <laughs> yeah no bismuth and pearl listen i know steve universe's pg show i never vowed for this to be a pg channel i got some vibes between what pearl was trying to do with bismuth i don't know much about polyamorous relationships but that seems to be pearl's thing now oh was it really even polyamory or is it just like, like sleeping around was, i think that's what was happening i couldn't tell if it was like a polyamory thing or, or just like an open thing yeah or like just like an open because like either is fine they're adults yeah they're yeah. beyond adults <laughs> yeah because yeah. she was like pushing business to do it too i think she was trying to set her up with her friend right yeah but like that say. was the exact wording this is like she was pearl's here to, to set me up with her friends like plural like you only use set me up in like either a romantic or sexual connotation I'm at gonna, least typically yeah. well, like i'm never like i'm gonna set you up with one of my good friends shade and have it not be like a dating thing but yeah i feel like some serious diamond and home stuff is going to happen soon because we got the diamonds and Steven's dream and then the injector appeared for like two seconds which caught me that off was, guard. Yeah, that I was, was like ah! Oh! Was See, when the crew members made Spinel, they, they knew we were going to eat her up. They're like <laughs> put the injector there. Uh, yeah, they were kind of just like <laughs> And then Steven like says Spinel, like uh, he was like mentioning like everything with you like the diamonds and Spinel like always had to help people and I'm like ha! They said her name! They said her name! They said it! Well like the whole thing of Steven like realizing he's useless is, is really hard to watch. I don't yeah. even know it. It's like he feels like he's useless. I think it's just like he's always gotten value from doing this certain thing and he now doesn't know how to create connections with people yeah. without doing that. Which is true because when we watched the series it like wasn't obvious that's what was happening but like the fact that they addressed that it happened is super like mature. I mean, that's sure. what I love about Future is that like it's acknowledging that the original series was super wholesome but Steven's way of life is not something people should like. You, you cannot be put on a pestle like that. Like savior complexes aren't healthy. That's what essentially the Future is you know conveying because for the stories they needed to tell in the original series, Steven kind of needed to be that character as a vehicle for that storytelling. Yeah. But they're addressing that like, all right, we told that story, but don't actually do this. <laughs>
because you know especially just because like cartoons are very impactful on children and like teenagers and like even now adult, like adults watch the universe for pretty much as like guidance like what do i do yeah <laughs> all y'all out there don't be the steven but yeah. steven can't be the steven like steven's like getting beat up like every episode like they're like literally like tearing him down so hard yeah i just love how the show's just at the point where like rebecca hey c- can we just put in a new tiny care can they go to connie's school <laughs> but no it's like he like he started the series after the movie as being like this like prince like this like absolute power like famous powerful figure a legend a legend at like 16 and now like they literally humor they humble him every single episode mm-hmm. like they like kind of put him in his place like, they didn't even all, humble him but it's also yeah. like they kind of just like push him on they, the, like, humble they push him into like a dirty puddle and then they're like like they like fart in his face and like, like no yeah, one likes you like, anyway. Yeah, it's bad. It's just like a disconnect because of it, where he's like been put on this level and now he like doesn't know how to interact with people outside of that. Especially human beings. Yeah. Like I maybe you did, but like I did not see this coming. <laughs> I didn't think they do a dark epilogue about like Stephen living in like the pretty much real world. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. Can't form connections. That's terrifying. This is like an exponentially scary show, and I love it, but it's hard to watch <laughs> because of that. It feels like. Like a creepy pasta. Like that's what you said during. Oh, the oh yeah. In dreams, but like a creep, like paradox. Like you can't see like her visor, or, like uh, beyond her visor. Like there's no pupils. She's like, glitching like, out. Any eyes. Yeah, she's like glitching out. She's like walking uh, up to like like the like the uh, the beach house in the sky. Yeah. Like I'm just like, all right. You cannot tell me that like if creepy pastas were as popping as they used to be, people would. Be, Yo, I saw this one episode of Steven Universe. It was like at 3 a.m. I woke yeah. up. <laughs> the TV. I don't know what was happening in the episode. But Parada had no visor. The, the background was changing to that that weird uh, t- TV standby with the rainbows and everything. I definitely got tail saw vibes. Mm-hmm. Dude, okay. Do you ever, I don't know, this is an image that used to go around where it was like pointing out how Timmy Turner, like when they started it, like friends and like a family, like by the end of the show, like yeah, all of his family's his... magic and it's just his fairies. Now he's a dog and like a little sibling fairy and like he never sees his friends and he only <laughs> talks to his parents sometimes. Mm-hmm. That's what future is. Like yeah, it's like yeah. actually just that within the show. <laughs> like Oh, it's so good. A follow-up question. What happens when you spend your entire life fighting an intergalactic war and then it ends? And you have to be 16. <laughs> you have to talk to people. You have to talk to people again. Not about war. Well, you watch a TV show with your friend and then you cry in your sleep. Then you go roller skating and you end up crying. Can Rebecca stop writing about my life? <laughs> when Steven was clinging to the wall of the roller skating rink. Bro. Oh, yeah, and he's like, I was like a I'll POV. meet you over there. I was like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. POV shot. <laughs> like, flashback to, like, uh, middle school field trips. Yeah, dude, terrifying. No, but that's what makes flashback Future so like good. Ago. It's real. Because, like, with, with the original series, it was just like, these are all metaphors, but we know what they are. Yeah. Like, these are, like, human situations, but elevated into this fantasy world. But with Future, it's like, it's just blatant. It's like, Steven does not connect with people. He's depressed. He Like, he has all, it's like all these very human things, and that's why it's hitting so hard yeah because it's small scale it, it allows itself to be very personal yeah and literally personal yeah in a way i'm kind of glad it's an epilogue this dragged on for like seasons of like the brand like no yeah, yeah it'd be true. like bro just go therapy all right please <laughs> but i did like the concept of like socially inept steven in the human world because it could have been like a whole different show if they focused on that more about mm-hmm. like how disconnected he was yeah so like i could see like seasons of that that'd be great but like i want it to be solved eventually so Bismuth and Pearl. I thought they were gonna fuse for a second. So did I. Because yeah. Future does not give a f- I thought they were, I thought Bismuth would just like, can I have this dance? And then they fuse. I would be like, oh my god! Yeah. yeah. But it didn't happen. And so we were silent. And we saw Stevani, which is cool. Roller ring Stevani. We love to see it. I mean, I do wish we could have saw. They, didn't, they couldn't get H.A. Machalka, though. They're like they're saving her for next week. I can feel it. I can feel <laughs> they're it. They're like, she's too busy being a cat lady on the other show. I also think that new episodes are coming. Can we, are we allowed to say that? Can we reveal that? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more, Shay. Well, we're, we're going to get up to 10 more. Maybe we should say they're capping it at 8 more. <laughs> yeah, there's 8 more episodes left after tonight. Yeah. It's going to focus on Steven, typically, per episode, probably. I think Steven's going to be in it. Well, the, our sources are telling us. We can't confirm or deny. Our sources are going to tell us that things happen. <laughs> How's this for source? What? Rebecca, oh, it's ringing. Rebecca, you have reached oh, the voicemail box right, of... Well. You guys wouldn't believe what Sugar just told me on the phone. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know if we're allowed to reveal this on camera, but... We're not. 
I heard new episodes might be coming soon. Spoilers. I wouldn't. I wouldn't turn them away. I'm enjoying the series. Steven's pink powers. Like he's, yeah. he's turning pink in his sleep. It's like, bro, help this man. Yo, you turned pink while you were sleeping. Then the show changed. <laughs> also, Connie clearly sees something's like off of this man. I do want to talk about this because yeah, he, was, she does. he was like, I feel like I can't connect with you anymore, and I need to learn how to skate. And she's like, You're, you're worried about skating? <laughs> they did have a talk. I think that's when it's gonna go really bad because they're gonna have a talk and then Connie's gonna react. But maybe Steven will screw it up. I don't know. He's not been very good with his words lately. He's true, getting real. angry a lot. It's weird seeing Steven angry, but I was angry at 16 once too, so I get it. You're angry now. I was getting, no, I'm not. I was getting beaten up by grown men in a wrestling ring when I was 16. Steven had Tiger Millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> true. But for the beautiful people at home, what did you think of these episodes? Which one did you like more? Did you prefer Bismuth to Casual or uh, uh, In Dreams? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or you can tweet your thoughts at Osherk Vox. All right. Dang. Or or me as Jetro Nemo. Or at Tommy PQM. Or at Roundtable Vids. By the way, the song that was on the radio and then the disco was by Emily King and she sings the credits theme being human I thought that was very neat listen to my next my mixtape listen to Tom's mixtape next week listen to Tom's mixtape next week if you're watching this next week or beyond you just put it on right now March 13th Shane has a channel too yeah so do I I make a video coming out anyways yeah I've been Oscar Fox. I'm Nemo. My name is Tom. And we're signing out.